freshman. That just didn't happen very often. Well, uh, a first-year coach coming into a school like this, you know, I, I wish you the best of luck in all that uh, you do. And uh, is there anything you want to say to the, the audience that... Uh, well, we're just we're excited to be here, and I, I just am really happy with Buena Vista. I encourage the students to come out and watch us play. And, um, you know, we haven't won a lot this year. We don't have a lot of wins in that column, but, you know, we're playing hard, and I think, you know, we, we're enjoyable to watch. All right. Thank you. Uh, I've been speaking with uh, head coach uh, Janet Allgood of the Lady Beavers, and I encourage you all to come out and watch her play. Thank you. Back here at Siemens Field House, we're going to take you okay. to a live interview with Dan Sine, who's interviewing Yeah, I just did my first interview ever. Oh. Okay. Hello. First time you gave five. Well, now there's another way to give five. Set a goal and give more. Five hours a week and five percent of your income to the causes you care about. It'll make you feel like a winner every day of your life. So give more. Give five. Call 1-800-55-GIVE-5. During the Gulf War, the National Guard and Reserve were a vital part of our military effort. All because of their training in management, operational skills, and teamwork. The same kind of training that makes them better when they come back to work for you. When your employees need time off to serve, be a hero and give them the freedom to protect ours. Trouble for the Beavers is Jennifer Erickson. 
She's the center for us, and she's got three fouls. And Amy Whitrock, a 5'10 forward, she's she's also got three fouls. And for the Norse, uh, Jennifer Hayen, she, she's got three fouls, as does Carrie Tuft. So uh, four players with three fouls, and that could prove to be detrimental to both teams. Yes, and, and, and another thing you have to talk about is uh, the leading score for PV is Cordoba with seven points, a buffer average for the season of 5.5. And you got to talk, Erickson has not produced, but she averages 11 points a game. That's right. She averages uh, nearly 11 points a game. And they really haven't been getting her the ball. Luther's been playing some great defense on the guards. The guards just haven't been able to get it inside. And when they do get it inside, Luther collapses their defense and seems to shut down Jennifer Erickson pretty well. And uh, you got to talk about uh, Rachel Lutz for uh, Luther there. She is a leading scorer with 15 points and eight rebounds, just leading all scorers right there. And uh, their second leading scorer is Carrie Tuft with uh, six points and four boards. So Lutz is just pounding away at that Beaver defense. The Luther Norse are in a lot of foul trouble, so that could prove to be a big factor here in the second half. They've got a lot more fouls than we do, and uh, they've been going pretty deep into their bench, though, so just can't tell what could happen. Anything right. can happen in this crazy game of basketball. All right, well, we're getting ready to start the second half here. Uh, got a full 20 on the clock, and the players are getting ready to come out on the floor. BV down, 45 to 29. And what kind of things do you think uh, Coach Allgood tried to stress during halftime? She probably is going to stay with that 1-2-1-2 one, two, one, two zone, although it appears like they're coming out to man defense. But they'll, they'll probably try to help out inside on Rachel Lutz. Well, Tally Hempy at the top, Luther with the ball to start the second half. Hempy with the ball again at the top of the key. Seiler getting up on her, and I think I think the defense looks a little bit stiffer now. Oh, well, we got an underneath a court pass to number 44, Carrie Tuff, and she's got another two points on her. And that inside game is just killing the Beavers. They just don't seem to be able to uh, stop them inside. at the top of the key. Cordoba tries for a steal. She doesn't get it, number 44 with the ball. They reverse the ball. Hempy with an open shot and does not connect. Erickson goes down to the floor. Oh, actually that was Ployer, pardon me. Down to the floor and they call a travel on her. She was knocked down. By her own player, Amy Whitrock. So just a tough break there. Jennifer Erickson went and got some coaching advice from Allgood. Actually, we got a, we got a substitution, Cheryl Bloom. Leaving the game and Jennifer Erickson coming in. So uh, Luther with the ball, get right to to Luft or Lutz, and she couldn't get anything. Number 44, uh, Harry Tuft with uh, another shot. That's her 11th point of the game, and once again that inside game is just killing the Beavers. The inside game for the Norse has uh, contributed for 15 of their points. Boyer. Bucket there by Ployer. Boyer, it looks like she's going to come out and try and play an extra good half. They need somebody to step up. Lutz with a, actually that's Kari Tuft with another hoop. She's got 13 now. She's got six points right here to start off the first, second half. Boyer with the ball, looking for somebody to pass to. Gets it to Siler. Siler breaks the press. She looks like she's going to try and go all the way, and she's blocked by Lutz. Lutz with a great block there. Yeah, she came over and played help side defense and got the block. Two players going down hard to the floor. Cordoba comes out of the race. She's gonna go all the way and too hard off the glass. Fighting for the rebound, Siler with a dive. But she's out of bounds, her foot was out of bounds when she tossed the ball back in bounds. Luther ball, good hustle though by Siler. Jerry. Looked like she may have just stepped on the line there when she tried to throw it in, but you're right, that's a great hustle by Siler, and that's what the Beavers need to do in the second half. But it looks back. like they are coming out with a little more hustle and a little more enthusiasm, and maybe maybe with a few breaks, they'll get back in this thing. When that post picks across for Luther Norris, that's just killing the Beavers. They've got to switch on that, or else uh, play some help side defense. 
There's a drive driving the all the way for is number 30, oh, Melissa yeah. Stanley. She looked like uh, she wasn't even contested. Dana no. Seiler with the ball. Deployer. Amy Whitrock driving to the middle lane, shoots and scores. Nice, nice move by Amy Whitrock there, Jared. Yep, and that's her sixth point of the game. Get over to Bellinger. Bellinger has just checked in. Looks with a shot. Erickson has just picked up her fourth foul, and that could prove big, Jared. That could. Oh, Only three minutes have gone by here in the second half, and already she's got her fourth foul. She sees so. She's going to be sitting on the bench for a long time. Yeah, Jen Allgood had just had to make the change, and and they, Luther has done a good job of just neutralizing uh, Jenny Erickson, and Erickson had to step up with the. Uh, Injuries to some of BV's top players. That's right. Cherry Carrico was out, as well as uh, Kelly Bartles and uh, Andrea Qual. All three of them out with injuries. And they all were vital members of the team. Let's makes her second free throw. Missed her first, so she's got uh, 16 points here early in the second half. She's six for eight in shooting those free throws. Uh, BV ball right now. Uh, Quarter let that go out of bounds. Probably a smart play by her. Okay, we got a substitution. Uh, Kristen Salton coming Kristen in. Kristen Salton, I couldn't quite see the number. Thanks, Jared. It was 17 02, 54 points for Luther, 33 for BV. Crowd starting to mount up. Amy Whitrock with a jump drive, cannot get it to fall. And then and she picks up her fourth foul. I think that's just careless, trying to crash the boards carelessly and not, not using your head. What do you think, Jared? She kind of tr tried to hustle there. You can't really yell at her for hustling after the ball, but uh, you're right. That wasn't the smartest thing to do, especially with three fouls on her already. So uh, Dana Seiler will be checking in for Amy Woodrock, who has four fouls. Quarter about uh, Get it down to Lutz. Lutz misses, but uh, someone's there for the putback. That won't go in. Three shots on goal, and nobody comes. Amy Woodrock comes out of there with a hustle rebound. And she's pushing it down. We got a foul on Bellinger. That's her third foul. Amy Whitrock kind of almost out of control on that, but luckily somebody stepped in and fouled. She's Salt in the glove. And Amy Whitrock staying in the ball game with four fouls. Try, she's just trying to get something going, and I think she uh, moved, you know, proved something to Coach Olga. Dana Seiler has checked in, and. Uh, Kristen Salton has checked out. We've got another substitution for uh, Luther. Uh, number 12, Tally Hempy comes in, and number 25 comes out for Luther, Katie Anderson. Player with the ball in, throws it away, but can't. Number 30 for uh, Luther cannot handle it. Melissa Stanley lets it go right out of her hands. And once again, Kristen Salton coming in. She'll probably shoot that three point shot. She's made already one for two today, although on the season she's two for 13. She's trying to inbound, inbound the ball, gets it to Cordoba. Salton in the corner, tries to drive. It's back to Whitrock, Whitrock to Cordoba. Cordoba trying to move it. Back to Salton. Salton spinning around. Cheryl Bloom in the middle, off the rim. That's a good move by Cheryl Bloom, but she's got to convert the basket there. Yep. Tally Hempy gets over to Bellinger. Luther with good ball movement here. Bellinger the right of the key. Shot clock down to 15. Floyer playing good heads up defense. Tally Hempy, they get it inside. We got a foul on Ployer. And uh, that's a big foul on her too. That's her second, so, so the foul is starting to mount up here, Jared. On the Beavers, they are. Luther's kind of spread their fouls out a little bit more, and they've gone deeper into the bench. They have more players. The Beavers, with all those injuries, only have nine players, while the Luther Norris have at least 12. I think they left them at home, too. Tough Carrie, with tough, tough with her first uh, Second free throw of the game, the first of these two makes it. Her second one on the way. She's two for two for the night. And that's good as well. So she's on a hot streak for the free throw. Ployer throws it away right to Tally Hempy. Hempy looking for somebody. 
Bellinger at the top, and they just I like to pass it around and look for a good shot rather than force something there, Jerry. Bellinger passes to Hempy. The Norris showing some good patience on offense. But BV playing some good good hustle by Cordoba. Tries to get the seal but can't. But the pressure gets to him. Bellinger throws the ball away, and BV's got to be happy. Let's see if they can keep that going. That's right. That's a ninth turnover on the Norris. We got a substitution here. Uh, I, can, I don't know who. Erickson back in the game, employer sits. That's a questionable substitution in my mind there, Jerry. Erickson's I think she's trying to give Ployer a break and give her some advice. She's looking a little winded there. So with 15 minutes and 15 seconds left in the game, we have uh, 56 for Luther, 33 still for Buena Vista. Anyway, Rock throws the ball away right into the hands of number 44, Kerry Tuft. That's the 11th turnover for the Beavers. Bloom trying to pressure. Katie Anderson with an easy jump shot left all alone. A little miscommunication there on the defense. The Beavers switched to a zone there on that possession. Whitrock was looking for somebody to get the ball into. Dana Seiler bringing the ball up. And it's stolen by Luther. Katie Anderson with the ball again. Bellinger with a jump shot, and that's good. So Luther's starting to pull away here. Yep, they're up by 27 now. Cheryl Bloom breaks her defense. Nice move. Looked like maybe uh, they should have called a foul there. She pulled up. Erickson with a nice nice attempt of a pass to Corda, but Cordoba can't quite get at it. That's 13 turnovers for the Beavers. And Janet Allgood's going to need a timeout here. So uh, with uh, 14 minutes and 19 seconds left in the first half, uh, Luther up 60 to 33, and we're going to take you to a public service announcement at the studio. Last year, thousands of innocent children were caught in the crossfire of violent crime. And it's not just the children who suffer. How much longer will you let this go on? Call this number now. We'll send you information on how you can protect your children from crime and drugs in your neighborhood. Together, we will take a bite out of crime. Fourteen uh, minutes and 19 seconds left in the second half. 60 to 33 our score. Luther ahead big. Starting to pull away yeah, right there, Jared? Yes, they certainly are. The Beavers uh, needed that timeout. Maybe get some coaching advice. Let's see, they're in a 1-2-2 two, two zone. Bellinger with a two-pointer. Her foot was on the line, but things here. Things just seem, seem to be going uh, the Luther's way right now. That's right. Whenever the Beavers turn zone, they pop those outside shots. And whenever they play man, the inside twin towers just kill them. Angela Myers taking up the point right now. And while Dana Seiler sits, I guess uh, Janet Allgood's trying to get something going here. Cordoba with the ball. Angela Myers drives the lane. Cordoba gets the ball back. I think right now they, they put Jennifer Erickson in. Angela Myers with some shot. And a fight for the rebound. Luther with it. Uh, I think they put uh, Janet Allgood put Erickson back in because they have nothing to lose at this point, That's do they? That's right. Luther rotating the ball around. Erickson almost picked up her fifth there after she left her feet. Got a, a new player in there for Luther. Uh, Tanya she Moe is checked three -pointer. in. It doesn't go down. Balance. Tanya Moe rotates it to, to, around to Bellinger. Nice pass inside for number 33. Jennifer Hayden with her second book. Bucket giving assist to Bellinger. A great post up there by Jennifer Hand, the 5'9 sophomore from Morrison, Illinois. Bloom driving down into the corner. Nice move. Gets it to Erickson. Erickson with her first shot. That is her first shot of the game, Jared, and she misses. She was under a lot of defensive pressure. Now we've got a foul. They've got a, f a foul on 
Number 40, that's going to be on Nicole Cordoba. That's her first foul. Once again, that moving screen got the Beavers. Janet Allgood looking for some sort of explanation from the referees, but she's not going to get it, folks. I think I think it, the team has just got to be uh, frustrated all around, and you can see the expression on uh, Coach Allgood's face, and that's a three-pointer by number 33, Jennifer Hayen, I do believe. Uh, I think it was... I'm not sure if her foot was on the line there or not. I don't know. Who's third? Erickson with the ball. Rotates it around to Cordoba. Cordoba off the, the glass. Back. No. No good. Luther driving the ball down, and we've seen this quite a lot. They're pushing the ball down, and we're not these Beavers. Showing no mercy to the Beavers. And with 12 minutes left in this contest, 66-33 our score. It's only a two-point shot by number 25. So make it 68-33, just as I say the score. Another, some more points that were attacked on. Do you know who shot that one, Jay? Katie Anderson made that bucket. Yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, spread, Luther spreading these points around. A three-pointer by Nicole Cordoba. That's her first bucket in the second half. And that's with a minute, with 11 minutes left. Uh, she, she had to score more in the second half, and she didn't do that. Luther on the fast break. Oh, they're just hot right now. Number 33, Jennifer Hayen with another basket. But, you know, one of the few bright spots right now for, for BV has got to be Nicole Cordoba coming out with above her season average, well above her season yep. average. Jennifer Erickson inside gets her first points of the game. A nice pass there by Cordoba. Maybe a bright spot for the Beavers. Steal by Amy Whitrock. Amy Whitrock with a steal. It tries for the Lara. And misses. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there, Jared. Number 33, Jennifer Hayen with the ball. <laughs> she uh, moving the ball around to Bellinger. Bellinger shoots a two, can't get it. Erickson fight for the rebound. Luther comes out of it. Jennifer Hayen. Tanya Moe with the ball, and we got a foul on Cordoba. That's her second foul. That's just a careless foul right there, Jared. Uh, that's just a hustle oh, foul. She's trying to make something happen. That's the 15th foul of the second half. We got a bunch of substitutions here. Luther going deep in their bench to give some of their backup players some playing time right now. And BV's just going to try and, and, and get some combinations, see what they can do here. She's putting Kristen Salton in for the three-point threat, I think. Janet all good is. We'll see how that works. Ployer playing some vicious defense on the inbounds. And number 32 for eight, Allie Walker for Luther throws it away because Ployer was just jumping everywhere which way she could. And Also great denial defense there by Dana Seiler. She's noted for her defense. Ployer into Seiler who just made that great defensive play. Coach Allgood looks really frustrated right now and keeps pointing to some missed opportunities that Buena Vista is making. And they just throw an errant pass right there. And uh, Luther gets it. Tanya Moe taking it down the floor. Bellinger inside. Lutz back in the game to get some more points right there. And I think she's got 18 she's points got right 18 now. Points right 19 now. points. She's having a big game right now for Luther. Dana Seiler bringing it down again over to Ployer. Right now with 10, min 10 minutes left in the game, 72-38 is our score. Luther winning big. People down on the floor going for the ball. Ployer, I think it'll be Luther ball right now. And Rachel Lutz is still down on the floor. She's getting up a little groggy. Finally she's up. It looks like she's all right. I think she may have taken a blow to the head there, Jared, or something. I, I couldn't tell quite what happened. It looked like she yeah. fell down on the floor real hard. Yeah, I think she just hit the floor pretty hard. She just needed a little time to recover. So we're coming in with some more players here. Number 50, we've got two players coming into the game that we have no names for, Jared, right now. And Rachel Niebar coming in <laughs> for the Beavers. Janet Allgood sending her in. So uh, She doesn't get a lot of playing time. The I guess beaver. the beav the Beavers just didn't come out and get it done today, Jared, right now. They've got to have a miracle to come back right now at this point. They're down by 24 with just under 10 minutes left, and we've got a long ways to go. Number 50 with a turnaround shot. We'll just call her no-name number one, and she's got four points right now because we got another no-name, and uh, she's in there right now too. So we've got Tracy Salton with the ball right now. At the inside game And she goes cross-court to... The player, and it's stolen by number two, number 32, uh, Jennifer Hayen, or 33, excuse me. T T Tanya Moe would bring the ball down. There's Jane Hildebrandt 
the coach of the Luther, Luther Norris, and she's got to be pleased with the way her team has been playing today. Yeah, she does. Uh, they came in here and uh, have just gotten it done in every facet of the game tonight. Uh, their defense has just been tremendous. Tremendous oh. pressure defense. We got another substitution for both teams. Cheryl Bloom for Buena Vista, and Tally Hempy is coming in for uh, the Norris. Number 50 is at the line. See if she can get some more points right now. In the inside game of the Norse, just eating up the Beavers alive. And the Beavers have not responded a whole lot on the inside game. Erickson, who's averaging uh, almost 11 points a almost game. Almost 11, only two tonight. And uh, number 50's first free throw is good. It'd be nice if we knew her name. We'd give her some credit, but I guess we don't. Her second free throw on the way, off the, and Cheryl Bloom with a nice rebound. That's only the third free throw the Norse have missed. That's another big uh, part of this game. The Norse have hit all their free throws. Oh, big tr pressure on Tracy Salton. Gets it to Whitrock. Whitrock with nobody. We got a foul. Travel on Nebar. Oh, travel. It looked like a foul to me, but travel. Amy Whitrock travels. And we've got uh, Luther bringing the ball in. we got a substitution. And with 9.09 left in the, the game, right now it's 75. Uh, Luther 38 for... Buena Vista. Whitrock coming in for Niebar. Tally Hempy bringing the ball down. Gets it to number 44. Ky Kyrie Tuft, I believe. Jennifer Hayne with the ball. Tally Hempy. Luther just, they haven't tried to, they haven't gotten careless. They've maintained the same composure all through the game and a block by Bloom and they call it some sort of a foul. I think it's going to be on on the Norse. On the, on the Norse, uh, if, we, if we can get a number. I think it's going to be on number, number 50. 50. Her second foul. and uh, She got that one blocked and tried to get the, her own rebound. And there was nothing doing. Nothing doing on there, one, Jerry. Ployer uh, going to be bringing the ball and uh, passes it into Cordoba. Actually, passes into to Whitrock. I thought she'd give it to Cordoba. Whitrock bringing the ball down. And, and Buena Vista is just trying to get some points. It, it's get, starting to get embarrassing. Ployer with the ball at the top of the key. Looking for someone to pass to. What do you think of BV's ball movement tonight, Jared? Well, they're running a simple spot flex offense. And uh, it doesn't seem to be working too well. The, the Luther seems to come off the pretty well. But Amy, Whitrock with that bucket. Yeah, Amy Whitrock with a nice... Lean around shot. That's her eighth point of the game. Great hustle by Cheryl Bloom. And they get the ball up to Cordoba. It's Salton, Cordoba, and Bloom. Cordoba with a pass to Bloom. Bloom tries for the shot, and we've got a foul on number 44, Kari Tuft, and Bloom will go to the line. And that's Tuft's fourth foul. Cod Cotterba did a good break. I think uh, that, that might have been a little bit of an experience. You know, she's a sophomore, and she found the right person for the for the shot. Uh, Bloom with an easy shot, and uh, Luther fouled. Bloom with her first shot, and it's good. So she gets a free throw point here. She's two for three from the free throw line tonight. She's got two points, both of those off of free throws. Her second shot. That's off the rim. Rebound number 50. Bellinger with the ball. Cordoba up to pressure, and they're going to call another foul on Cordoba. That's a real touch foul. I think Cordoba probably drew that one out of frustration here. Beaver's not playing the best, and uh, she's trying to make something happen with only 7.55 left. And yeah, you've got to expect that when you're down by, by a score of 75 to 41 with 7 minutes and 55 seconds. We're trying to be positive for this audience, and it's it's getting really difficult. You, you know, what do you think are some of the positive points, though, for Buena Vista at this present moment? Well, uh, hopefully they'll get over those injuries and get everybody back. And uh, right there, that was Stacy Billinger missing the free throw. That's only the fourth missed free throw by the Norse. Cotterbell with the ball, and off, uh, off number fifth. Lutz is back in the game, and and she's just. Uh, performed one heck of a game and I think they're just trying to either pad the stats or or just keep consistent with it. I don't know what the situation is with She might not have any more post players or Probably something. Probably not. Salton with a three and it's good. It drops downtown. She's got eight points. 
She said two threes tonight. Uh, That's her second three-pointer of the game. That's right. And on the season, she is, uh, I, I believe, like four for 16 on the season. And, uh, she uh, also turned around and made that uh, foul right there for Buena Vista. So uh, Bellinger will go to the line and shoot a one and one. And she misses the first one. Blitz with a re rebound. They missed two free throws in a row. Bellinger. Actually, that's a Walker. Right? Walker right there. That's her first bucket of the game. So with about seven minutes and 15 seconds, it's 77-44, Luther. Cordoba with the ball, trying to get something moving. Gets his salt and salt, and it's been hot. Over to Cordoba. Cordoba drives, can't get anything. Into Whitrock, Whitrock off the glass, rebound, and she's fouled. Nice hustle by Amy Whitrock there, Jared. Yes, and amazingly, that's Rochelle Lutz's first foul of the game. She has just played a remarkable game. Uh, she's been rebounding and scoring a ton of points. She's uh, hit 12 free throws, or she shot 12 free throws. I think she's got 21 points in the game right now, if, if not more. First free throw by Amy Whitrock missed. She's got mark. 12 rebounds in the game. Doing real good on those boards and, and just being real good. Amy Whitrock with her second shot, and that's good. 77-45 our score with 6.50. Tanya Moe with the with the ball right now. To the Hayen, Jennifer Hayen with the ball. Excuse me, uh, Allie Walker. Hayen with the ball into, trying to get the ball in the Lutz and Cordoba on the fast break. Pushing it up the court. Gets it to Salton, Salton into Whitrock. Whitrock with the drive off of Lutz. And I think right now the Beavers have to look for that inside and back outside pass because Whitrock's getting collapsed. She's getting triple teamed in there. And Salton and uh, Cordoba are both open for that three-point shot. And Salton's hit two out of two tonight. Player with a shot and count it. The foul on Lutz and she's picked up two quick ones and Player with a beautiful shot at the top of the key under heavy pressure. That was a great inbounds play by the Beavers. That's a setup play. And now they're going to inbound it again because it was after the shot, apparently on the rebound. And Porter's having a big game right they find now. Salton in the opposite corner. Salton three. with a three off yeah. the mark this time. But the rebound goes to Buena Vista with a foul on Allie, Allie Walker. Walker. That's her third foul. So Amy Whitrock is not going to shoot any free throws. They're not in the bonus yet. They're going to take it out underneath the board. Uh, Tanya, or... Uh, Employers having a beautiful game right now, and she hits another shot. She's got uh, 12 points, I believe. Breaking the press is, is Luther, and Bloom with a nice steal, but steps on the baseline. That's a tough break. She, she really hustled for that loose ball, and she picked it up, and she just happened to be stepping on the line. 77-49 our score with five minutes and 48 seconds. And uh, Luther with the ball right now. Try to get the ball into Lutz and a foul on Amy Whitrock. And that's her fifth and she's gonna be done for the night. Taking a seat. She leaves the game with unofficially nine points. Coming in for her is gonna be Angela Meyer. Angela Meyer has been a bright spot. Uh, Allgood's been using her quite a, quite a bit a little tonight. So Lutz goes to the line to get some more points. Tracy Salton in midcourt waiting. And she hits her first. Lutz is just having a tremendous game, and it'll certainly put her in running for Iowa Athletic Conference Women's Player of the Week. Wouldn't you think so, Jerry? I, I definitely tend to agree with you. She's seven, or not, seven of nine from the field. 
make that 8 of 10 from the field. Or from the free throw line. Ployer with the ball. Loose ball. Ployer hustles to get it back. Gets it to Cordoba. Cordoba is over and back is the violation. How many turnovers do we got? The Beavers on have 17 turnovers on the night as compared to the Luther Norris women who only have 13. Well, it seems to be a game marred by fouls and turnovers. And uh, we're starting to get a pretty big crowd, and they're not uh, getting too much of a welcome here. With a score of 79 to 49, make that 81 to 49. And once again, Rachel Lutz. Rachel Lutz having an enormous game. And uh, Angela Myers with the ball. Gets it over to Cordoba. Cordoba driving. Out to Myers. Myers with a shot off the rim. And Lutz with a rebound. I don't know if they're... Uh, Lutz has 24 points on the night. Incredible. What are they... What is Luther doing? They're just they're just pounding Lutz at, at BV. And Lutz got another foul. That's, her, that's third. her third foul. She's had three this half. All this half. She's had three since the 10-minute mark. So with 4.59 left, we've got a score of 81-49. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Dan Zahn, our statistician for the night, doing a pretty good job uh, marking down points in both uh, BV's column and Luther's column. Too bad it's not more in uh, BV's column at this present point in the game. That's right. Shooting at the line for the Beavers is going to be Cordoba, and she's having quite a game. And there you see Janet Allgood, a look of distress on her face. She misses that free throw. Luther with the ball, number 50 back in the game. It's her first missed free throw of the game. And Luther has missed a shot. Warrior driving down. Nice pass to Bloom. Bloom with a shot. Bank off the glass, and she's home. Good fast break there by the Beavers. Wait. Warrior with a lot of a, a very nice outlet pass to Bloom. Bloom coming up to cover. Luther looking a little confused. Cordoba with a steal. No. They lose it. Got it. But Cordoba playing hustle defense. you got to be proud of her. And a foul on Cordoba. Jared, do you see it? She's got uh, that four fouls to, for the night. And uh, I, did you see that foul, Jared? I, I didn't understand the foul there. I thought she let her go by. I think she probably reached with her with her hands. That's what they're probably going to call. And Dana Seiler coming in for Cordoba. Cordoba taking taking a seat and she's played a, a pretty good game she's been one of the few bright spots for the beavers this night that's right she's got 10 points on the night as compared to her season average of 5.5 katie anderson at the line for the the norse her first shot on the way and it's good luther is just dominated in every facet of the game wouldn't you say jared they sure have, but the Beavers have hustled the whole game, and you have to admire that from a team. Janet Allgood's first-year coach, and she's trying to build a good, solid program for the Beavers. And she's got some good young recruits here, and maybe next year she'll get some, get a deeper bench, and the Beavers will be tougher. And with 422 left in this contest, it's Luther 83, Buena Vista 51. Siler with a travel, and she knew it when she did it. We have another substitution. It's Allie Walker into the game for Luther. That's 18 turnovers for the Beavers, unofficially. Number 42 is in. We don't have a name, but uh, she's played somewhat of a decent game here. And she shoots off the rim. I think Lutz is out of the game, Jared. Yeah, she might be out of the game for good. Uh, Luther coach decided that 24 points and I believe 13 rebounds was good enough for her. So I've, she'll be sitting probably the rest of the game. I would think that uh, BV fans would tend to agree with her on that. Dana Sider to the right to Angela Myers. Ployer with a shot. That's a good play though by Angela Myers. That's what they needed to do all game long is penetrate and then dish it back out. This Ployer was sitting wide open on the baseline, just couldn't connect. With 3.36 left in the game, it's 83 to 51. We've got a shot and a foul on Bloom. It looked like Tally Hempy may have taken an extra step, but the referees did not see it that way. Two shots for Tally Hempy. 
Dana Seiler sitting back at midcourt. She has to wonder what, what's in the future for these freshmen. Have to wonder what's in the future for the BV program. Janet all getting her first season there in their first season, so they're going through the aches and pains just as much. That's that's one good thing about the Beavers is uh, they'll have everybody back next year. All their all five of their starters are uh, all sophomores and freshmen. So next year they'll have everybody back and hopefully they'll have a year of experience. Player with a jumper off the rim. Ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate to say this, but this is a learning experience in a way for him, Jared. It sure is. You have to take your lumps. Luther really rotating the ball, and they get it into number number 50, and she scores her sixth point of the game. Or excuse me, seventh points of the game. Eight. We've lost track at this point. Dana Seiler with the pa inlet pass to Angela Myers. Angela Myers down to the baseline, trying to get something going. Throws the ball away. We've got a fast break, number 42. She gets it over to number 30. Who gets it over to number 42? Jump shot. And it's good by number 33, uh, 32, Allie Walker. Good fast break there, good ball movement. Yeah, it, it didn't mean to be that way, but the Norris have just had a lot of luck tonight and everything seems to be going their way, which is too bad for the Beavers. Angela Myers at the top of the key. She's really played some good minutes here in the latter parts of the game with penetration. Cheryl Bloom gets in there, and the ball is knocked away. She hit the floor pretty hard. Must have been a clean block there. Looked like number 32, Allie Walker, got a piece of it, and it was out of bounds on Luther. We got two substitutions for Luther right now. Ballinger is in, and Tanya Moe is in. Same lineup in there for Univista right now. Tracy, or Kristen Salton. Cheryl Bloom, Seiler, Myers, and Plo Ployer right now. <laughs> Trying to see all the numbers here at this point in time. So we're waiting for an inbounds. Salton will inbound it. Gets it to Myers, and Myers with a quick shot is blocked. blocked by Allie Walker. Bellinger bringing the ball up court. They hit in number 50, and 50 is fouled by Bloom. Bloom hacked her, and number 50 will go to the line. 50's come in and played a lot of good solid minutes here for the Lady Norse. Well, uh, Angela Myers will leave, and probably for the rest of the game, because with two minutes and three seconds, the Luther Norse are up 89 to 51, and they've just played a solid all-around game, wouldn't you say, Jared? They sure have. And Here's number 50. Uh, we don't have a name for her, I'm sorry to say, but she's played a pretty good game. And she misses a free throw, and she's one for three on the night. Second free throw on the way up, and good. That's in two. Ployer with the inbound pass to Siler. Siler bringing it down court. Over to Cordoba. Cordoba with a spin move into Siler. Siler walked. She's walked three times tonight. That's the 20th turnover for the Beavers. Turnovers starting to mound up. 20 turnovers cannot be a good, you just can't do that and win ball games. Bellinger with a pass over to Tanya Mo. Tanya Mo with a fake and a good jump shot. That's her first bucket of the game. She, she gave a great fake and Cordoba just totally fell for it. Tanya Moe bringing the ball down, looking for a good pass. Bellinger back to Moe. One to number 42, no name number two. And a foul on, it's a foul away from the ball, I do believe. On number 50, 52, Ployer with a foul. So the score, 92 to 51, with one minute and 15 seconds. Number 32, Allie Walker is going to be shooting free throws. How many points does Allie Walker have tonight there, Jared? Uh, she has four unofficially, and there she missed that free throw. That's Kristen Salton with a rebound. Siler getting into the middle of the floor. Siler looking for somebody to pass to. Gets it into Bloom. Bloom with a good move and a foul at number 50. And uh, Bloom will, excuse me. 
number 20, Tanya Mo called for that foul. Excuse, Excuse me. me. Reaching in, and she got Cheryl Bloom. There you see Janet Allgood conferring with her assistant coach. I think they're trying to they're trying to find uh, maybe some things to take into the locker room after post game to to talk to these players about. Cheryl Bloom hits that free throw. Misses that second one. Luther with a rebound. Bellinger pushing it up court to Tanya Moe. Tanya Moe holds the ball, spins, gets the ball back. She fires a two-pointer in and out. Siler Cheryl hustles for the rebound. Siler with a rebound, pushing it up court. Loses control for a minute. The ball is knocked out of bounds. It'll be BV ball. Tanya Moe with a, with a good effort at a, a steal there. Just couldn't come away with it. So with 42.8 seconds left in the contest, it's 92 to 52. The ball is, is knocked out of bounds. It'll be Buena Vista ball. Kristen Salton with the inbounds. Kristen Salton looking for the inbounds. Into Siler. Siler dribbles. Gives it up to Myers. Myers to Salton. Salton with another three off the rim. Ebar with the rebound. And I've got a, we got a foul on Bellinger, and Bellinger can't believe it, but who cares? That's her so fourth foul of the game. Right now it's 92 to 52 in favor of the... Shooting the free throw is going to be Angela Myers, 5'8 senior from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. All right. So with uh, 22.3 seconds left in this contest, it's 92 to 52. And uh, Angela Myers at the line, if I'm correct. Yes, this is her first free throw attempt of the game. She scored two points already. But she's been a bright spot because she showed she can come in and, and, and give handle a good effort ball. and handle the ball pretty good. She hits the first free throw. Second one on the way. And that one's good too, so Angela Myers two for two from the line. Four points for the game. Good pressure, ball is kicked. A foul on Siler, that'll be on Siler. She knocks uh, Tally, Hempy, Tally Hempy to the floor. Tally Hempy not too pleased with that and wouldn't accept uh, help up from uh, Siler on that play. So 15 seconds left in this contest. Uh, the Beavers have added a couple points. No change, they're down uh, 92 to 54. Rebound, free throw was off. Andrew Myers with a good outlet pass. Salton dump traveled. She was wide open for a free, for a layup and just traveled. I think that's just inconsistency. Game winding down right there. That's just the way the ball game's been going for the Beavers. Nothing seems to go their way. And that was the 21st turnover of the game. So with final seconds of the game, and the shot goes in. The game is over, and the final sc score is uh, Buena Vista 54, Luther 94. Right now we're going to take you to a station break and we'll be back. Oh, we're going to stay here right now then? Okay. That's it for now. Join us in about 20 minutes for more Buena Vista basketball. As the men challenge Luther, right now we will look at Points of Vision. Points of Vision is a documentary. Okay, we won't look at Points of Vision. I guess we won't. Stay, keep it here and look over some final stats. BV with a total of 22 rebounds. Uh, Amy Whitrock scores eight points for the Beavers. Boyer with 12 points. And Cordoba with nine. And starting with eight. Now we're going to go to a break, back to the studios. We'll see, be back here in a moment. This is just one of the many parts you can play as a young Red Cross volunteer. Volunteer and play your part. And that's 
that's it for now. Join us in about 20 minutes for more Buena Vista basketball as the men challenge Luther. Right now, we'll look at Points of Vision. Points of Vision is a documentary showing life here on the Buena Vista campus. Points of Vision was produced by Paul Bowers. Again, our final score was Buena Vista 90, or I'm sorry, Luther. 94 to 54 in favor of their wins, 94 to 54 over the Beavers. We'll see you in about 20 minutes. This is a good place to be because as a teacher, I'm allowed to do virtually anything I wish to do. And I can find students who are interested in doing it with me. I came from a town of 350 people, graduated with 17 students. So I didn't know exactly where I could go and what my potential was. I've grown a tre tremendous amount since I've come to Buena Vista and, and my ideas, I've changed my thoughts about things so many times, but it's, it's great to be challenged in that way. Well, it's not 100 students or 50 students. It's five students working on a literary magazine or it's 15 students putting on a student newspaper. It also made me feel like uh, that I can do whatever I want to do. I mean, I, just, I, I think that uh, I'm in, in charge of my own destiny and that you know, there, there's nothing that I can't accomplish right now. And it took some faculty members opening my eyes and saying, hey, you've got something, use it. And giving me a little push, going out of their way to help me make a difference for myself. Well, I think it's uh, engaging the students in a kind of cultural conversation where I can see how much they grow and also how much they can teach me. I feel like I'm a step ahead of a lot of people. Um, at bigger schools, you know, I feel like I have that extra edge that I don't think a lot of people have. My quest is to take those students with whom I can build some sort of relationship one at a time and eat and build a unique experience for each of them. college in the quiet northwest corner of Iowa would offer so many opportunities for students. On campus there are a whole range of opportunities from organizations associated with curricular programs to other activities that provide experiences and responsibilities. There's a heavy emphasis put on getting involved in, in different things not only within your major but also um, things that are going to be completely different from your major and things that are going to help you grow in all facets of your life. And I think that experience, you don't get at a lot of institutions, a real practical, meaningful experience while you're studying. The one thing about Buena Vista College is that people here are not afraid to think big. If you're looking for internships, the faculty here will help you go after opportunities in Washington, LA, New York, you name it. As I came to college, I realized right away after my first year that I could do anything that I wanted to do. Uh, first of all, I went abroad to Japan and that's the best thing I've ever done. I stayed there for five months. I've had chances to do internships with the Internal Revenue Service. I've, I've been to Florida to interact with business persons. Um, probably the greatest thing BV has done for me and that, that I've done for myself is take advantage of the many opportunities I have. I knew that I was going to be doing some great things but I had no idea that as part of my education that I'd be going to Milwaukee and 
sitting courtside for NBA basketball games, interviewing players after games in the locker rooms. An experience like that is just tremendous. And if I wanted to seek a career 10,000 miles away from here, that was an opportunity for me. And I feel very confident that anyone that comes to Buena Vista College will feel that same confidence when they leave Buena Vista College. The astonishing fact about the facilities at Buena Vista College is how they affect student attitudes. Look carefully at how those facilities are maintained. Students take a tremendous pride, a sense of personal ownership in this place, and that pride shows in how students take care of the buildings and equipment. At Buena Vista, because there is a smaller number of students, it's really easy to get access to a lot of the facilities because there isn't big lines waiting to use them. What really makes this college stand out is not only do we have these important resources, but that students are using them every day in all disciplines and for a wide variety of purposes. The facilities at Buena Vista are by far better than any of the other schools I've visited. At Buena Vista College, the access to information is phenomenal. We have the facilities to connect you to the rest of the world through new information technologies in the library, through computer technologies, and through satellite and video technologies in Loggy Campus Center. The facilities we have on campus are remarkable and surpass any that I've seen at you know, any other colleges or universities. And as I look at graduate schools, I really am recognizing how you know, lucky I am to have the type of facilities we have at Buena Vista. I think the faculty does a really good job of inviting you into their offices, inviting you into their homes, whether it be for an evening meal or something like that. And just those types of uh, um, personal commitments that they, they put forth really shows that uh, they're not only here for their job, they're here for you as an individual to see that you are forwarding in your career. The flexibility of the institution and its small scale size has really uh, allowed me to tailor my teaching to specific groups of students as well as students individually once I learn to know them and that doesn't take very long often. It's surprising how eager the faculty is to get to know their students and get to know the people around them and I think that relationship between the faculty and the students is a real strength of Buena Vista. The old saying goes those who can't do teach. Well those who can't do teach somewhere else because the faculty at Buena Vista College are really doers. Not only are faculty members active in their respective fields, but they often involve their students in these activities. They literally teach by doing. You can sit down and have a conversation with a professor um, on more of a friend-like level and not worry about what they think. They're, they are your friend. They'll sit there and talk to you. The state of Arkansas and then looking at these river systems which really need on rivers. The way you really affect people is a one-on-one. -on -one, that It's really difficult to try to get a, a whole group of people and, and then take them someplace that we have to do is work with one student at a time. That you get to deal with in business law. Now, so the business relationship law? between the faculty member and the student is paramount. If you don't get that at a college it seems to me particularly at a small college like Buena Vista College then you're missing out on and really a major part of what you're paying for. I think that's what's great partly about having the small classes here is the faculty know most of the students in the class and they know what each student's capable of. So they know how to challenge me and what I'm capable of as compared to maybe, you know, the student next to me. Everything is student oriented and it's not just the professor wants to do this and that. The professors try to do things that are gonna help the students. Teaching students how to learn on their own by giving them difficult challenges, but also by giving them confidence and self-esteem. That's what teaching at Buena Vista College is all about. Rocking out of the Buena Vista College campus is taking a step into the world of ideas. And the whole curriculum at Buena Vista College introduces you to the many facets and changing dimensions of that unseen and hidden world. So that by the time you graduate, 
that swirling panorama of concepts, perceptions, images, and views is no longer hidden and elusive. But it's a permanent and concrete feature in the way you think about and look at everything. It's great to be challenged in that way and to, to find you know, new ideas and, and new horizons and new goals. And I think that a, a college that will challenge you in that way is, is excellent. The ACES program is an important component in the curriculum that cuts across all majors. ACES events give you exposure to a broad range of ideas, subjects, even kinds of presentations. Concerts, plays, lectures, workshops, all of these things really make you understand that you can learn about anything and that all areas of knowledge are important to a complete education. So not only is the classroom instruction very, um, very rigorous, very important, uh, but it's the other things as well outside of the classroom that uh, not only helps you socially, but helps you um, academically in your field as well. What I found out when I spent a semester in England, I was in a class of just two, myself and a gentleman from Princeton, and I could compete just as well as he could. It's not that concepts are one thing and applications are another. It's that the concepts and applications, the theory and the practice, are all part of the same thing. And that's how the world is, whether you're inside the classroom or outside of it. I hope if there's one thing our curriculum teaches students, teaches everybody, it's that you can achieve more, accomplish more, reach for more than you ever thought possible. At Buena Vista College, you feel like you really belong to something extraordinary that you're part of a community. I think there is a deep sense of community between faculty and students uh, that goes, again, beyond the classroom and extends uh, into Storm Lake and it extends even past your years as a student here. At Buena Vista College, everyone, other students, faculty, staff, treats you like you belong. And the more comfortable you are in that college situation, the better off you're gonna do as for grades, meeting friends, um, furthering your career and just your whole outlook on the rest of your life. I mean, it's very important, I think. As I was touring around the school, I had at least four people.